Good evening and welcome to Around the Lake, a collaborative venture between the staff of the Ithaca Times and the Finger Lakes Community Newspapers. I'm Glynis Hart. I'll be your host tonight. Uh, we have here Josh Brokaw from the Ithaca Times. Um, Carrie Blakinger, also from the Ithaca Times, uh, <laughs> will be arriving shortly. <laughs> and a uh, special guest tonight is Brian Van Campen, our uh, film critic, stage critic, and man about town. Arts dude. Arts dude. There we go. <laughs> uh, um, and the first story of the week, Josh, was the water plant. This has been a long time coming, fixing that ancient water plant up on Water Street in Ithaca. Yeah, they're, uh, they're close to having the first stage or phase or whatever numeral you want to give it done uh, in late May, supposedly. $36 million project that's been going on a while. I think they approved the money for it like two years ago. So, uh, but yeah, the first stage is the head of the plant, which is where they, the water comes in from Six Mile Creek and they spin it around, add some chemicals, Water goes into a couple of basins where the, kind of all the sediment sinks, and now they have more stuff to help the sediment sink, whereas it used, uh, it's more of an active tank where it used to be. It just came in, they added a couple of chemicals that helped it settle, and then it went oh. through to the filters. So that first part will be done in late May, supposedly. So is this, uh, is this going to improve the water quality in Ithaca? Well, that's the or idea. I, the second phase is uh, the actual filter itself, like the finer filter, which formerly is anthracite coal and mm -hmm. sand it went through. Yeah, that's, that's the, uh, the standard method. The standard way to do things. Uh, but they're using a, uh, the newer membrane filtration system. So that'll go online right now. They're estimating late October, November. So... And how do they pay for all of this? I mean, the, the water plant was there. It was built in, you know, 1904 or something like that. I think they remember. floated a bond. It was really old. Okay, so they floated a bond. Yeah, it was 1903. They, they didn't stash money saying, no, boy, yeah, I wasn't out. here for it's that. It's been 100 <laughs> years. We should save no. up for the next. No, but I think it was. repairing our water plant. I mean, I, the stories I was reading from when they approved things, it, you know, these people were saying it was probably the biggest city project, money-wise, they'd ever done. So... Uh, so yeah, it's kind of, I guess, if you go up there, it's the, uh, it looks like the new plant's kind of eating the old one, because the oh, small, the old one the is old really, building it's is really right, modest. Yeah. It's, it's a humble, So they have the, a, humble water a plant. big, like, 21 foot tall con concrete building they're putting up behind it that'll hold the first set of tanks, because right now those tanks are underground, and then they'll start demolishing parts of the old one for the second phase. So, so where does the water come from? Six Mile Creek. It comes from Six yeah. Mile Creek. So it is up the, the reservoir. Yeah. The, the, yeah. Okay. And they'll also be fixing up. They'll be supposedly uh, adding a longer intake, so it's a little bit further into the middle of the water in the reservoir. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's also 60-foot dam improvements in the works, but those aren't part of this project exactly. That's just something that's kind of been talked about in meetings. So, so there's... The the filtration that they use now, can, I mean, does it take out more stuff? I think the theory is it will. Yeah, it will take out more. Um, like the first stage will leave cleaner water for the second membrane stage. Right. So that's the theory. I don't know. That would be, well, be nice because there's a lot of stuff in the water. Um, <laughs> and then we were going to ask you about the, the comprehensive plan. What's what about it? that? Well, what is it and what is it for? Uh, Why do we need a comprehensive so, plan? Well, it sounds so bureaucratic. Ithaca is going to determine what every single thing you do for the next 20 years <laughs> is. Like waking schedules, waking where, moments. Where you walk your dog and... Exactly. Uh -huh. um, which way, like clockwise around the block. And which way your dog's allowed to spin before uh, making a mess. Um, <laughs> so I'm trying it's all in the plan. <laughs> So he is out of compliance. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, the comprehensive plan, to, and I wrote this in the opener to the cover story today that we released on April 29th. It is that, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's really more, it should really be called a general vision uh, because it's really more right. of a, in 60 pages, you're not going to say every single little 
dinky thing that should happen with parking on Cayuga Street or something, you know, or bike lanes. On, 60 pages. Yeah. That sounds like such a tome. It's, but it's not. I think not. Spencer's ended up being like six. One page? Four pages. <laughs> no, it's four pages. Right? I thought it was no, it's Ovid. Ovid is the one. Ovid's four pages? <laughs> Spencer's, Spencer's was, like, was much longer, and that ended up more. being like six because the Republicans got to it. <laughs> <laughs> no one to spin those. It was probably printed double sided too. Um, <laughs> savings, but no. I mean, the general the general idea is uh, that Ithaca wants to become a denser city, real city, regional hub, and uh, a lot of that in the more heavy development areas will be whether that's downtown, College Town, the West End, and you can see that in College Town over the last few years. I guess uh, is you know more mixed use stuff, putting up bigger buildings that have more uh, housing units and commercial spaces and common spaces. So they want to build up instead of out. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's not really any out you can do within the actual city limits other than, you know, building up, you know, certain parking lots mm. on 13, which I'm sure certain people would like to do, but that's not going to happen for a while. Um, Good to know. But uh, the waterfront is one area that will be focused on, uh, whether on the inlet, uh, or any other places in the West End because there's a lot of like parking lots and nothing going on. So I, I think that'll be a hot area for development for large development projects over the next few years because it's it's there's opportunity there to make things denser. So so that's kind of the general gist. The general I mean it talks about sustainability, equity, and that's one of the tensions that you know everyone kind of knows is going to happen. What is equity? Equity means people have an access to jobs, healthcare, services, groceries. Uh, there's a lot of talk about. So they took all those sections out of Spencer's plan because that none yeah, of that happens that in Spencer. Well, where are you going to walk? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, my. Uh, so one of the towns I covered just went through the whole. Actually, it's, they're still going through it. They still haven't they're still approved. Trying yeah, to they're approve still trying. Cover, cover. <laughs> they're still trying. They're trying to get this thing. It gets smaller well, and it's smaller. It's smaller. Its plan. Every time you, yeah, I think it's from this specific process. I think they started meetings in cover. Megan Wilson uh, led the project, and uh, three years ago or so. Okay. So they had like 20, 20 different public meetings. They just finished a set of uh, six or eight open houses in neighborhoods. I think that's and about actually, how long it's taken I, Yeah, Spencer. I talked to Megan today, and I guess yesterday up on campus at Cornell, they had like 60 people show up, huh. which is a pretty good turnout for this sort of open house, non-specific issue people are angry about thing. Yeah. Um, I'm so, uh, so but this is really phase there, one. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. All they the do design that Design Connect, Connect class. class. Yeah. 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 yeah, I think I ran into a few of them at other meetings. But uh, so this is kind of phase one. Um, there'll be a phase two where it'll break it down to neighborhoods and mm -hmm. then get more specific, like what we should do with this block or this specific issue, you know, parking in Fall Creek or what have mm -hmm. you. Uh, so this is really more the general, like, what do you guys think about this after a couple years of doing? What do you think about this? So that's where the plan came out of. That's where it'll continue to go. So we'll I see. think it's worth mentioning in the discussion of any comprehensive plan that these things don't actually have any legal teeth. Because I feel yeah, like. Very little. Yeah, I, I feel like this has been in some of the smaller towns, at least, people are like, you know, thinking that this is law. Yeah. You know, and I, I think right. it's worth it's, mentioning that this is I think in a vague theory, general like, I was, idea. I was told by a couple of people that, in, or I've heard it said that in theory, if a. Uh, if a city was going to do something that was really outside the bounds of their comprehensive plan, like, I don't know, like put in, put a Walmart on the commons, I guess, um, something really absurd, uh, technically you could challenge it in court using those parameters that are in it. But that's, would, it, would it would have be, to be something It would be pretty, difficult to do so. Has that and happened I think, successfully in other yeah, I don't, In theory, I, I, that's what I, 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 actually, I don't know. If I remember correctly, in the village of Trumansburg, when they put in the ver burned dairy, um, the uh, the site plan review was challenged in court um, because it was um, the plan for the burn dairy was um, in conflict with the comprehensive plan which the village had just finished and so it had you know the um, what thirty foot high lights and that big canopy and it was right on the road okay. and lots of neon and they went well you know this is against what people have been saying this is against what the village planning board has delineated for trying to keep 
the uh, Trumansburg looking pretty and, and sort of historic, and uh, it didn't win. So burned dairy, huh? Yep. I like I'm, their chocolate milk. They well, yeah. probably why they, they, they did it. Just I, to throw I think they did some it. kind of contribution. I, <laughs> right. I think they have the best chocolate milk in town, you know, by far. <laughs> and get, get it in the glass bottles is pretty good. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Just this wanted is, to throw that in there. Okay. Don't worry. It's the most interesting thing that can be said about a comprehensive plan. Yes. <laughs> that cool Whoa. chocolate milk. Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're a comprehensive plan aficionado or. Um, so, so <laughs> Carrie, you, you grabbed the mic, so to speak. Um, and one of your stories this week was about. 1% shared services. Oh, what, yeah, what yeah, and I also about? wrote about the legislature, which didn't end up running. Um, but um, so in, in I TCOP, I that. Uh, oh. online, it's online. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, so TCOG, um, Joe Mariana came to TCOG with an idea for how everyone can meet their shared services requirement because as part of the state tax freeze in previous years, municipalities had to stay under the state mandated tax cap in order for taxpayers to be eligible for an itty bitty rebate. Um, Is that that circuit breaker thing they keep talking about? No, the circuit breaker didn't happen. It didn't pass. Oh, okay. Right. Um, I missed that. I can't believe so, I would miss I mean, a detail in the did budget. Anybody, so, did it, so did anybody hear a property owner, or we're just all journalists? <laughs> so I just wanted to say we got a rebate. I, I, own, <laughs> so I own my own place, Journalist and an actor. Yeah. Um, I own a 23-year-old van. Did, did you get a rebate? <laughs> I didn't get a rebate. Okay. <laughs> so, but, the, so, but the idea is we get a tax right. rebate if they stay right. under the property But for the, the next budget tax. year, they have to not only stay under the tax cap, which is a limit to the percentage increase of the tax levy. So they not only have to stay under the tax cap, but they also have to show a savings through shared services and efficiencies that is equivalent to 1% of the total tax levy. And that's for uh, school districts, for you know towns, villages, the county. Um, and the county is going to be able to make that. So uh, Joe suggested that the town, that you're allowed to uh, do your shared services savings as a group, you right. can you know add together all your uh, tax levies and take one percent of the total instead of doing it each individually. So if one person, go, you know, one municipality has so, well more than one percent, they can join with others and help them out basically. So I mean, so in this the case, way that I read it is that everybody who had already um, tightened their belts and tightened their budgets and you know done shared services. Um, it's too bad for them right. because they're not within the window of you time. You can only look back to 2012. Plan. So some of right. our biggest shared services savings were in 2011 with the creation of the healthcare consortium. So the healthcare consortium doesn't count. It's a huge shared services, but it doesn't right. count. Um, but uh, this year, the there's been some savings in terms of looking at dependent eligibility for healthcare because there's some people that are still on the plan that maybe shouldn't be, uh, you know. So they evaluating that, and there was a number of other health care savings. So, so they if are, all your ex's children are still on your Tompkins County health plan, right? they're coming after you. <laughs> and, and, and they'll, you know, they're going to get the boot, and that's going to save everybody money. Which, I mean, he estimated quite a lot of money. Yeah, 400000 to 600000 Yeah, uh, and to, to do that, to do it in that aggregate manner and have all the towns and the county count together, they, they need to show 880000 in savings. So they've got most of it just through that, plus there's other health care savings. And then, you know, some of the towns have some of their own savings they've come up with. So doing it together, they'll be able to make the tax cap or make the shared services requirement. And then and then if you own property, and then you might get a tax rebate of seven, Equivalent to whatever dollars? the increase was. So, Something like that. Yeah, whatever so dinky. Whatever the increase was. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Well, so that's cool. Um, Trumansburg, local news, if you have any local news. I have some local news from Trumansburg. Um, they're working on their open container law uh, so that people can sit outside uh, on Main Street of the various restaurants, the Rongo and so on, and you can have a beer. Uh, they got into a little trouble way back in the 70s. Were you around? 
Yeah. Yeah, I was in uh, grade school. Sure. Yeah, I was like so so 76 or 78. Like Trumansburg was totally out of hand. Really? At least yeah. So they say, yeah. Mm. Uh, the Rongo was just as, really a student bar. They had bands in the street. Um, and so they passed a, they passed a, basically a prohibition on drinking mm. in public mm. in Trumansburg. So. so they're trying to get back to out of control? Well, sort of. and now all those people have, have you know, <laughs> calmed down. Um, they're still in Trumansburg. They, 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 they promised to be good. Years. It took 40 <laughs> years, but they calmed down. <laughs> it took 40 years. Now they own the round goal. They've been taking a moment they, for 40 years. <laughs> that's just like, right. Mm, <laughs> darn drinkers. Now yeah. they uh, now they own the Rongo and they and they would like to um, open it up again and they promise that that'll be good. So um, so looking forward to that because it'll be nice. It'd be nice because like the Rongo has just been closed and opened and closed and opened so many times. It would be nice to just stabilize and have it be there because so I certainly saw some great shows out there over the years. As it closed yeah. when you were like having a drink there. Uh, I don't remember. And then reopened during the <laughs> yeah, day. I wouldn't remember. <laughs> reopened by the time the picture was open. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah. Probably. But I mean, it's you know it's it's doing just fine. Now, yeah. So. Good, good on. I've been out there recently. I had the mac and cheese. It was great. Um, <laughs> I, I love that you can go to a restaurant and order mac and cheese. That's still so bizarre for me. <laughs> it's just like. That was one of the best meals I ever had at the North Star. They had a really good one. Uh, oh, yeah. Some red wine, you can't go wrong. I know. I was thinking we should do like a mac and cheese roundup. Um, you know, a do a tasting article. Yeah, do mac and cheese. Just don't make they one do reporter do all the <laughs> split just, it up, just, split just it up like, in a team so yeah, they we'll, all become like gluteus masses. We'll, 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 we'll get, get it, we'll get it free, fun. right? They'll, they'll <clears> donate <throat> for free for a, a newspaper taste no, test, right? I, no, no, no. <laughs> you, gotta, you can't do, you have to do a food review anonymously. Sure. I can't stay home. Oh, I didn't. I thought this was a food contest, not a I can't just stay home and make it. I just can't stay home with boxes of macaroni and cheese and do that. Right. So besides, besides, Mac and cheese this summer. What else do we have going on that you would recommend, Brian? Oh, well, uh, well um, uh, this drops tomorrow night, Thursday night. Yeah, this yeah, show. yep. I'll uh, be introducing okay. Barbarella at uh, Cinemopolis. The, the, why? Why? Oh, it's why? part of the Ithacon. It's part of the Ithacon that Warren wrote about this week. It's you know, the, the, okay. if, I think it's the 40th year of Ithacon. Yeah, yeah, it's mm -hmm. Ithacon 40. That's up today. And uh, is it something favorite and I was, favorite and I was, movie I was contacted by one of the organizers saying that. Well, they said they were a big fan of mine, and that's always a good way to get me to read the email. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, emailed me and said, uh, we'd like you to introduce the movie. And I said, sure, I haven't seen it in a while. So uh, it's, uh, I, I watched it again the other night. And I, it wouldn't be my first choice of that sort of era of uh, comic book movies. Uh, I think my favorite is probably Danger Diabolic with uh, John Philip Law, but they, they're, they're showing Barbarella, so I have to uh, talk about that. But I don't think Jane Fonda, as we were talking before we did the show, I don't think Jane Fonda really got her feminism act together until after Barbarella. So it is important. No, she clearly, yeah, she yeah. didn't. It's, it's like an anti-feminist. It was directed by her mark. husband, Roger Vadim, and was like, look at my wife <laughs> in all these different <laughs> positions. Uh, and, I, I, uh, and I grew up on Jane Fonda as other more, more enlightened movies. So it's interesting to look back. It's like she sort of, uh, I think after that, so when she kind of started becoming more of a social critic and an activist. But I just wanted to, uh, real quickly, if I can, uh, I have a list of all the uh, stuff that's happening in the uh, various summer theaters. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, you've got you've got some time. The so. Hangar Theater uh, is, opens uh, with uh, Yasmina Reza's God of Carnage uh, from June 11th to June 20th. Then they're following that up with the uh, rock musical Spring Awakening uh, from June 21st to July 11th. They uh, then are doing uh, Hound of the Baskervilles, which is an adaptation of the uh, Arthur Conan Doyle. Mm -hmm. Sherlock Holmes movie, but it's all the parts are played by three actors, and apparently it's a riot. Hmm. It's really, really funny. Uh, and then they're finishing up. <laughs> <some> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, you've got Sherlock, you've got Doc Watson, and then you've got everybody else. Or uh, yeah, I guess I you think, just kind of, you know. Yeah, they did that with a show called The 39 right? Steps based on the Hitchcock oh, film, yeah. and they did right. that where they compressed all the characters down to like five or something like that. So that's hmm. kind of a trend of uh, a small cast playing everybody. Um, and they're finishing up uh, July. 30th to August 8th uh, with a Lanford Wilson classic called uh, Tally's Folly. And I, I can't confirm this, but I'm pretty sure as someone who grew up with the hangar, I think this is the second time they, I think they did it back when it was new, back in the early 80s. And, right. and they're doing it again. Uh, and uh, 
the kid stuff is uh, the Emperor's New Clothes, Stuart Little. We've got a double bill of E.B. White. There's uh, Charlotte's Web, a uh, Little Red Riding Hood. And I think they're doing a, a kind of a, a shortened version of uh, Bye Bye Birdie uh, in there somewhere. Uh, Kitchen Theater has uh, one more show running into the summer, Alice Eve Cohen's uh, Thin Walls from June 10th to 28th, and then they're taking the rest of the summer off. Uh, the Ithaca Shakespeare Company, which mm -hmm. does uh, their shows at the Arboretum at Cornell Plantations. I probably should recuse myself from this because I'm in the yeah, thing. Right. Uh, we are what? doing uh, the second of our, uh, our uh, history plays, uh, Henry the oh, Fourth, okay. which is going to yep. combine elements from Henry Henry the Fourth parts one and two, and we're alternating that with a, a, one of our more popular productions. I think this is the third time we've done it. Is uh, Midsummer Night's Dream? Uh, oh, that'll be and fun. It's certainly one of the. I think the, the way they're right. they're billing it is that Midsummer Night's Dream is one of the most popular plays in in our time, mm -hmm. and Henry the Fifth was actually the most popular play in mm -hmm. his time. So we're sort of uh, throwing those together, and. Uh, I think you'll be able to see some actors doubling over. Uh, I'm only in Midsummer Night's Dream, but I, I, I hear that there might be some doubling. Uh, Cortland Repertory Theater is offering a farce called Always a Bridesmaid from June, 9th, uh, June 3rd to the 13th. Uh, the historical musical 1776 from June 17th to July 4th. What's that about? Uh, it's about the creation of the Declaration <laughs> of Independence. I'm so glad you asked. Uh, and it was uh, it was originally produced back when we were still in the in the Vietnam era, and so it was sort of like an interesting comment at that time of like where we started from, which is a, a slave-based labor uh, uh, and all that good stuff. Uh, the Adams Family from July 8th to the 25th. It's based on the uh, I think it's really more based on the the second Adams Family movie where. Which one, one was? Of the, it? Which one was of the better? Adams family? The first one, kind Adams of family values. Uh, grown it, um, along, yeah. Wednesday gets a. Uh, they get sent to summer camp or something like that. And she that. falls. She falls for another kind of weird kid, uh, or a normal kid, depending on how you look at it. Weird kids always do that, don't they? They sure do. Yeah. Uh, Sherlock Holmes and the West End Horror from uh, July 28th to August 8th, because CRT is real big on those kind of traditional drawing room uh, mis mysteries. Uh, a Miracle on Division Street from August 12th to the 22nd, and uh, and one of those uh, jukebox musicals. It's called Suds, the Rockin' the 60s musical, and it's got uh, it takes place in a laundromat, and it has uh, songs <laughs> like uh, These Boots Are Made for Walking, uh, Are You Lonesome Tonight, Walk On By, and uh, Where the Boys Are. Uh, <laughs> they're doing their 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 kids show is uh, The Jungle Book in July, and then I think. We're down to the Merry-Go-Round Playhouse, which is offering up uh, West Side Story from May 27th to the 17th of June, The Light in the Piazza from June 24th to the July 15th, Late Night Catechism from July 14th to August 8th, uh, Saturday Night Fever, based on the John Travolta mm -hmm. disco movie, uh, from July 22nd to August 12th, Sweeney Todd from August 19th to September 5th. I think that's a, really that's one of Stephen Sondheim's better uh, shows. Uh, the Calamari Sisters Big Fat Italian Wedding. I think that's part of a, an they, ongoing they, series. They, yeah, they the do Calamari really well with these Calamari come, Sisters. Come back I think, every year. Yeah, and I think they write, they're writing sequels. It's kind of like uh, there was a, a show with two actors. They played all the parts called Greater Tuna. And I think there are about four right. sequels to Greater Tuna. And speaking of that, uh, there's another musical finishing up things, uh, Forever Plaid, uh, Plaid Tidings. Uh, from December 9th to December 23rd, and that's got to be at least the fourth or fifth iteration of Forever Plaid uh, that's out there. Do you ever dip down into um, the south, into Broome and Tioga County? Because we know, Carrie, you've gone to the Tioga Players Productions um, in Owego, and then we ha also get uh, Endicott Performing Arts Center, EPAC. Well, Dustin um, Zarni from uh, CNY Playhouse in Syracuse, I don't know if that counts, I guess it's north, so no. Uh, uh -huh. Um, oh, well, has, we do has, occasionally carry their listings. Has been uh, after, after us to start coming up in review. Mm -hmm. uh, I've only, I, I do comedy showcases up there every other month, and uh, the only show that I've seen there was terrific. It was Evil Dead 2, the musical, which is now my favorite thing. Uh, uh, I remember you talking about it, that on yeah, the radio. Well, right. I, had, yeah. uh, I think I had my old sneakers that still had fake blood on them. Because ah. uh, uh, they give you, if you sit in the splatter section, every time someone gets eviscerated in that show, you get you get splattered with uh, this this big rotating dish of, of stage blood, and even if you have a poncho and booties on, you're still gonna you're still gonna go home. With some. Poncho and booties on. I had to wash my coat, but I didn't mind because it was it was great. It was uh, it sort of collapses all three Evil Dead movies into one crazy little musical. 
Uh, and, you know, I've seen My Fair Lady 1,600 times. Why can't we have something a little... Oh, a little oh yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. A, yeah. And, um, Catholic taste. And uh, this Why week, couldn't you put the two together? Well, you should. My Fair Evil Dead. Yeah, or something like that. Right. You should. You should every day. Um, and then uh, <laughs> the State Theater has a benefit coming up. Um, don't have that? the date in front of me. Oh, it's, in, it's in the encore section of yeah. the okay. yep, that's Saturday. Uh, with Sim Redmond and the New York Rock. And, uh, and we have a thing spots. for free tickets on our website. Yeah, oh, But we cool. spelled okay. Ithaca wrong in the ad. Oh, <laughs> we're sorry. <laughs> we're going to see it anyway. At least we still know where we live. Wow. Well, can't always spell it, but we know. And, uh, <laughs> That's right. And, uh, spelled right. Oh, and I was going to bring, gonna bring up, speaking yeah, of it arts, says the um, <laughs> East Shore Festival of the Arts uh, in hmm. Lansing is this Friday, uh, I believe, 6 to 9 p.m. in the Lansing Town Hall Complex. And that's a, a little bit of everything. It's a really great date night. Uh, yeah. You know, bring bring the kids, bring your honey. You know, free wine, <laughs> uh, chocolate tasting, harp music, um, different different kinds of music. Yeah, Dan Beener, be playing his Celtic harp. Um, and so, oh, there's if I could lots throw of a, stuff to do. Yeah, if throw I could throw in a recommendation, in. there's a new uh, movie opening that I reviewed in this week's issue, uh, called The Clouds of Sils Maria with uh, Shelley Pinoche We're and uh, this, you know. Kristen yeah. Stewart. Yeah, it's very, very good. And um, uh, and Marvel's Daredevil on Netflix is awesome. I, mean, uh, okay. I was only going to watch like one episode, two episodes, and 13 hours later. <laughs> <laughs> you you emerged. Not, it's, it's really one of the best sort of uh, continuing storyline kind of TV shows. It's only 13 episodes, only 13 episodes at about an hour apiece. So if, if you have a day okay. off from work or you're sick, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> what? I don't know how you can like, what is that? I don't know, I don't know what a day off is. I don't, I don't know how you can stop with just one because it's just really, really, really well done. Uh, a lot more, better than I was expecting. And now I'm really looking forward to the other four series on Netflix that they're uh, going to be coming up with and rolling out over the next few months. It just seems like every time I turn around, Netflix has something new on there. It's like, good luck with loved ones and seeing people <laughs> and your job. <laughs> right. Uh, so <laughs> tempting. Uh, and you were mentioning uh, Lily Tomlin and uh, Jane Fonda have well, a show coming out uh, in May. On Netflix, yeah. Uh, back for the first time together since 9 to 5 in 1980. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, when I interviewed Lily Tomlin when she was at the state a while back, we talked a lot about that. And uh, Netflix just keeps throwing out amazing uh, uh, things. I mean, uh, not so much the Full House reboot. I don't really care about that. <laughs> I, thought that was, I thought that was dumb back when it was new. But uh, for you Full House fans, uh, hey, you know, who am I to judge? Right. You're well, obviously judging. I think that <laughs> you can, you can ju go ahead, judge. I'll, I'll judge all you're, you're, you're you're the You're a film critic. critic. You yeah, that, that's that's kind of your job. I forgot. Yeah. I forgot. Okay. Thanks for reminding me. All right. Well, thanks for joining us, and uh, we'll be back next week. Um, also, thanks to Joe Scaglione for his uh, opening montage for uh, from 4D photography. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, yep. yeah. That Old uh, high school buddy of mine. Uh-huh. Well, yeah. You, yeah, he's got good aerial shots that we opened the show with. So. Wow, looks like we have a budget. And <laughs> I know, it does. <laughs> Pure such. Okay, thanks, and we'll see you next week.